It opened the John Moxley versus Tomohiro Ishii. Ishii, I believe Kingston says it, but uh, Lord, what a match. It was very, very simple. It was very, very brutal. It was very, very violent. I loved every single second of it. They chopped each other as hard as they could. They tackled each other as hard as they could. They elbowed each other as hard as they could. They mixed in some biting and elbows to a Sita. Uh, Eddie Kingston came out to make sure the Blackpool Combat Club did not attack Ishii on the floor. Went to commercial there. And then uh, it's just back to the elbows. <laughs> for the for the record, they were doing the boo yay spot, and Moxie was getting booed, and uh, Ishii was getting yays. But uh, the crowd was hitting the spots. They loved both men. It was very very clear they loved both men. Uh, we get several near falls of a, 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 a gosh pile driver, a discus elbow of death. Uh, Eddie and Claudio just on the floor staring holes at one another. And the paradigm shift for two. And then Ishii hits a paradigm shift and the best lariat ever. Not because he hit John Moxley in the head really hard, but Moxley bumped onto his head really hard. I laughed so hard and watched it several times in a row. It was great. Cutters and sliding lariats. And at this point, I cannot stop smiling. Death Riders. Uh, kicks out of that a curb stomp a death rider and finally after the, after that Moxie got the win a great 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 mean guy match both men were exhausted Moxley kisses his fingers and then planted a kiss on Ishii's forehead as he goes to leave he shoulder checks Eddie Kingston still not happy with this guy on his way out and he stops on the ramp to look back and there's a close up of course he's bleeding it's Moxley it's a violent match he's bleeding but he also like the center of his forehead is swollen and then also bleeding. Like, he got a big-ass hematoma. And there were some stiff headbutts in here. And uh, then the hematoma popped. It looked like it happened. But anyway, I love this. I loved every single second of that. Well, I didn't love every single second because I didn't like the headbutts. You know, they, they have uh, Shibata wrestling for this company. Like, maybe he could call, a, call a meeting. a lesson to be learned there. And go, you know, no one can touch my head anymore because I, I did a, a clonking headbutt and almost died, yeah. which is what happened. But um, And by the way, you guys remember that match? I mean, if you watch that match... I mean, you know, there was no indication there was a problem until the match was over. Right. So it's not like he did a clonking headbutt and it was like, oh, my God, he's, you know, he's about to die. No, nah, he did it. It was just like any other match you ever see clonking headbutts in. But uh, it was a bad day for him, and uh, and he almost died. So anyway, I would not do clonking headbutts, especially because, you know, the thing with a clonking headbutt is, uh, you know, quite frankly, they don't look very good. You ever notice that? Like, remember Granny's favorite wrestler... That uh, red-haired fella, that skinny geek. Oh, the Englishman. Yeah, whatever his name was. Gallagher. Gallagher, Jack Gallagher. Granny loved Jack Gallagher. And uh, and he, that's my daughter screaming right now, uh, Jack Gallagher and uh, and uh, Drew McIntyre as well, you know, they both uh, they both do the headbutt where they throw the fake headbutt and they, they slap as they do it. And uh, it gets a giant pop every single time, and it looks fucking great, and the people go absolutely crazy for it, but you don't actually touch the guy. Whereas, you know, Moxie and Ishii are actually headbutting each other, and, you know, I don't think they were doing it super hard. Um, there was no Shibata headbutt here. Shibata headbutted Okada as hard as he could. Well, yeah, but I mean, still, when you clonk your heads together, it can be unhealthy. if you've ever headbutted somebody on accident, like, it fucking really hurts. And so a clonking headbutt is something that really hurts. And if you showed it to a person who wasn't a fan, they would think it was fake because it doesn't look, you know, devastating. So anyway, I don't like those spots. But aside from that, you know, this match was it was so great. And, you know, the crowd was tough on this show. It was a tough crowd. And, you know, if they would have done this match at, uh, at the uh, Forbidden Door show, I mean, this would have been about a 10-star match because of the crowd. As it was, it was like a, a four-star four match, four-and-a-quarter-star match. Great. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, and the only difference is the crowd. Yeah. And they had to work a little bit harder to get the crowd, but they did. And uh, once they got going, I mean, goddamn, this match was just awesome. And, you know, like with the uh, Young Bucks match later, it's not just a match. It's not just a bunch of moves, but there was a story here. And the story involved Eddie Kingston and Claudio and Moxley. And it was a storyline that carried throughout the entire show. And I liked it a lot. 
Renee is trying to interview Adam Cole. Well, before that, Mox goes to leave. Yes. And he shoulder checks Kingston. He did, yes. And Kingston starts screaming. He goes, congratulations, you did it by yourself. You don't need these guys. Yeah, he's... And so Mox, he's all, now he's all pissed off. Like, no fuck, no shit, I, I don't need these fuckers. And so he gets all angry, and he starts storming back towards Kingston, but then he's like, ah, fuck it. And he turns around, and he, he just heads to the back. This Moxie character is great. Because the last three weeks, including twice on this show, Moxley is really mad, but his character just fucking gives up. Because, like, this fucking Kingston, every time, he's been through this before, you know, he knows what's going on, it pisses him off, but he knows there ain't nothing he can do about it, and he doesn't want to lead to blows or anything, so he just tries to be the bigger man, even though he's a heel, and he just he just leaves. Because he likes this guy deep down, and Kingston likes him. It's a love story. Twisted one, as we'll get to later. Renee is attempting to interview Adam Cole when they are interrupted by MGF, who has totally changed his tune. He comes zooming up in, in his ride and, and says, and it's hard to explain how funny it was when he said this, but if you can imagine MGF shouting, hey, hey, what's up, dude? It's perfect. He congratulates Adam Cole on getting sick and skipping the paper. You wishes he had thought of that. Note this tag team tournament is a huge opportunity for Cole. He's not on uh, MJF's level, of, co of course, but he's close. He's close. So imagine what they could do as a team. They should bond this weekend. They should hang out like a couple of bros. And Cole agrees, but he wants to go say hi to some people first. And Max says, that's cool. I got us a gift. And it is uh, tag team merchandise. Like MJF Bay Bay or whatever it said. MJF really is the smartest man in all of wrestling. That's for sure. Now, the smartest man is me, because I had the best fucking idea, but right. I don't think they're going to do it. All right. So they announced on Collision, and actually I could probably look right now and find out what they did because it was taped, but they announced that on Collision, MJF will be in action, but they did not name his opponent, mm. okay? Now, if his opponent was going to be, you know, some big star, like, why wouldn't you announce it? I probably should look at what they did before I keep doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I figured, okay, well, because they're not announcing his opponent, it's going to be some gimmick where he, like, he just squashes some local geek or something, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what they should do is Collision should start, and the announcer should say, the world champion, MJF, is, is scheduled to be here tonight, but he's not in the building. and We don't know where he's at. But, man, if he gets here, he's gonna, he will be in action tonight. So then you know, you got the cameraman who happens to be following them, because Adam Cole and MGF are partying around Hamilton. So, you know, Adam Cole is, uh, you know, he knows what he's doing. And so he's just he's just pounding drinks down MGF's throat. They take a shot here, take a shot there. They're just partying like crazy. So then Adam Cole deposits him at the building, fucked up. Mm. So MGF then goes into the ring with his local jobber. And then he shouldn't lose, obviously, but this local jobber should get like near fall after near fall after near fall as Max is like fucking stumbling around because he's because Adam Cole got him drunk and he barely like gets to win at the end. And because the whole story here is like, you know, MGF's trying to fuck with Adam Cole, but Adam Cole is the baby face and he's actually outsmarting MGF. So I thought that might be a good way to do it, but that's I don't think that's what they did. Hey, hey, you know, we'll see. But uh, that, that, that is not a bad idea, actually. I assume we're just gonna have a bunch of wacky videos of the two of them partying and. Hamilton. You gotta make the most of this, dude. If MJF and Adam Cole are going out to party, like I want some fucking videos of this. This better be some good shit. I I, I can only imagine what the party scene in Hamilton is like, but. Uh, <laughs> That's why it's so funny. Yes. <laughs> They're going to a fucking party in Hamilton, yeah. Ontario, Canada. Yeah. That's why so, Lance is like he is. There ain't shit to do around there. What are they gonna party at a Cracker Barrel? He's from Calgary. He's from Canada. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I see. I'm at a Father's Day retreat. We were going to go camping today, but uh, suffice to say, the weather was not uh, suitable for camping with these two youngsters, and so we rented this cabin here instead. Bug. God damn it. <laughs> eat it. Sorry. Eat it. I'm going to eat it. That happened last time. I swallowed a bug. I hope God. it was a big one. Ah! Mm. My wife is asking what happened. And, and you explained. I ate a bug. Come on in, Pays. Why don't you come say hi to everybody? What is all over your face? Oh, oh my God, that's my child. Hey, Hannah, come in here. Say hi to everybody. Do you got s'mores all over your face, kid? Why don't you come over here and say hi? What do you want to say? No. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Get out of here. All right. Well, that was fun. <laughs> hey, listen, we're going to be back on Tuesday. NWA TNA episode one. Right, Hannah? <laughs> She's acting like a child. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. Yes, Faze? Uh-oh. Okay, get out of here. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.